50 years ago, Ozark Mountain Daredevils released its first album, setting the band on course to become an iconic country rock band known for its unique vocal harmonies and top 40 hits. In 1971, Randall Chowning recruited Larry Lee, Steve Cash, and three other musicians to form the band. In 1973, they signed a recording deal with A&M Records and headed to London to record their self-titled album, which included their first hit song. If you want to get to heaven, hit number 25 on the Billboard Hot 100, and the critically acclaimed album was ranked among the 100 top pop albums that year. Their best known song and biggest hit, Jackie Blue, came in 1975 following the release of their second album. The song reached number three on the Billboard Hot 100 and made it number one on Cashbox Top 100. Randall and Larry continue to pursue their passion for music and songwriting as solo artists. Steve passed away in October 2019. I think one of the things that really set the Daredevils off early were influenced by the big rock bands, but they they also were from the Ozarks, and their music together really came together to portray a, a unique sound. And so we had kind of this quirky country rock pop, you know, like like a chicken train. To talk about Larry was as a founding member of the Ozark Mountain Daredevils, and during that time he uh, he wrote their biggest hit, Jackie Blue. The Daredevils were an important part of the country rock movement of the 70s. He first caught my ear literally as a member of the Daredevils as an outstanding vocalist. I, I began to realize that I was drawn to a lot of the songs that he sang lead on. He had also written them and he was an outstanding songwriter. He was never content to just rest on the, his laurels. Larry continued always to pursue the music. He produced 13 number ones for Alabama alone. He spoke to me through his music, and specifically the song Spaceship Orion that was on the very first album. In the, in the history of American music, I think he's one of the most important persons uh, that have, have ever come out of the Ozarks. What makes Larry stand out as a writer and musician is he he has his finger on the pulse of what's happening around him and is able to transfer that feeling. Yeah, if I had to sum up Randall, I, I, I think, uh, you know, just sort of that clever, funny, you know, kind of a guy, uh, things outside the box. It's a fun environment because it's a lot of back and forth. We record a little bit and then we'll listen to some of Randall's jokes, you know, or some of Randall's stories. Obviously, he's got a lot of great stories. You know, he would probably laugh about this, but, I, you know, we, 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 we'd spend four or five hours on the song and all of a sudden I would say, I get it. I, I understand what you're, you know, you're saying now. Randall, he has a really good work ethic. He was the guy, I think, that really put all those guys together. I don't know if they would have ever gotten together if it wasn't for Randall. I had a friend that had a uh, tape recorder, a real, real tape recorder that you could overdub with. He called me later on and said, could you call that guy, see if he'd be willing? I've got some songs I'd like to kind of put down on tape. He was just learning to write songs. And for the next two years, oh, that's what we did. You know, when you get to know Randall, uh, he's just, just a very passionate and uh, loving person. You know, he just lives life to you know, the fullest. In 1969, early in 1969, he went to California, Northern California, San Francisco. And I followed him out there about three or four months later. And we had a blast. I mean, it was the summer of love. You know, a hippie thing was going on. But we were really interested in poetry and writing. And City Lights Books was there. We spent a lot of time there. But we also heard that one of our favorite poets was given a class in, at UC Berkeley. So we just went over there one night and uh, waited till the class was over and just walked up to Lou Welch and asked him if we could audit his class. He said, well, if you'll come have a beer with me, we'll see. And so then he let us audit his class, and we wrote some poetry, and he said, it's terrible, it's terrible, you know, because he was really good. But we got better because of that, and we just became even better friends. And we spent quite a bit of time in San Francisco and Berkeley. But we wanted to learn the blues together, and he had a harmonica. And uh, so we just record and record and record 12 bar blues. So it just, I, I always said, what, let's play something else. You know, I got to learn how to do this. He just had 
had this basic, rootsier kind of approach to the music. Because he wasn't, he was a primitive, he was more primitive. We were all primitive musicians, but he was the most primitive, but did some of the best stuff. And he wrote a book called The Met. It's a trilogy. He wrote three books. And it, it's not a real popular book. It never did much because he got it published from an English publishing company that did cookbooks. And I kept telling him, Steve, get an agent, get an agent. And he didn't care about that kind of stuff. But I also want to say he always respected and took care of his family. Cody and Star meant the world to him and his grandchildren. I just want to say he was a really good guy.